guys, how's it going? So it has been a hot minute since we last took and done any type of survival kit. Um, as far as the DIY one goes, I believe the last one that we looked at was actually a BCB uh, combat survival kit, which we will be doing the field test of that uh, in the upcoming weeks. But I decided to put together what I would consider to be along the lines of one of the uh, best and, you know, ultimate, quote-unquote ultimate, uh, mini survival kits that covers pretty much all your bases. Now, right off the get-go, I'd like to say that this kit is kind of intended to be carried along with some type of container, ideally a metal container. And like with my vault can titanium canteen mess kit set here, this front pocket fits the tin and that extra large uh, Titan Survival emergency blanket perfectly. The knife and whistle will actually slide in alongside the tin and the blanket in this front pouch. Uh, but if you want to free up that space for something else, um, or free up this pocket on the side. That knife fits within this side pocket along with the whistle, or you could take the whistle and attach it to any of your carabiners that are on this setup. But this kit by itself as a standalone, if you want to throw it in your cargo pocket, uh, just in the front pouch of a day pack, uh, a fanny pack even, like it's a very slim profile kit. So, you know, it covers a lot of bases and it's very versatile and the different ways you can go about carrying it. Now, diving right into it. So holding all this together, I have got an MODL, I believe it's pronounced modal, elastic strap, and that allows us to carry our whistle and our knife set up here on the outside, and then that just keeps our tin closed. This thing right here is not like overpacked. There's actually room to put even more smaller items in there. But as a rule of thumb, you want to make sure you can close your tin. It's also a good idea to run some tape around the outer edge to make it waterproof. I just didn't do that since we were just going to be opening it right up for the video. So going to our primary cover element. This is a Titan Survival Extra Large Emergency Space Blanket. Uh, if you was here last winter, i done quite a few shelters and really run these things through the dirt. They're the toughest uh, survival blanket with a reflective inside that I have found on the market thus far um, until you start getting into like, you know, the, the large reusable uh, emergency space blankets with the grommets and stuff. But for packable Mylar blankets, these are uh, the top of the food chain in my opinion. And then with that right here is a Titan Survival Whistle. This is not a paid promotion or anything on their end. They just do make some really high quality outdoor products. So <coughs> things super loud. I like having it on the outside of the tin because, you know, as I mentioned, this tin would be taped closed for waterproofness. So if got separated right at the get-go from somebody or some group, you could just reach in, have immediate access to this and you wouldn't have to dig through things and risk dropping any of the tiny components that are in this kit. For our cutting tool, now ideally you would have, you know, your multi-tool, a pocket knife, a fixed blade, things of that nature uh, on your person, in your pack. As far as a mini survival knife goes, this right here is one that I have been extremely impressed with. This is focus. This is an outdoor element. I believe this is their feather light. No, this is their contour feather. There we go. That's the name of it. So super sharp blade. I love that it does have a large enough handle. It comes almost to the end of the inside of my palm. Nice deep front finger groove. I don't know why I'm having a hard time focusing. But they have the best sheath design that I've come across thus far for a mini knife like this. So it's got a ferro rod right here, which I've not really got the coating off of this yet. But there we go. Throws really nice hot sparks. Uh, but more importantly, it has a ceramic knife sharpener right here. So you can keep the edge of your knife nice and sharp and honed. Because, you know, a dull knife is the most dangerous knife so you got that, and its back clip is really universal. You can carry it on your belt. You can carry it on the inside of your pocket. You could carry it on a little, uh, you know, Model elastic strap like this. The possibilities there are endless. Now, here we go. This is the thing I'm sure 
y'all are the most interested in, and that is our survival kit in our tin. So this is one I put together. This right here is a County Com Titanium tin. Right there is like the model number. They call it, it's the cage, and then you can figure that out. It's got this really cool topographic uh, design on the top. I don't know the exact measurements uh, in terms of the difference between this and an Altoids tin. Um, it's a bit larger, but nothing crazy uh, in differences. But so opening that up, that right there is what you are immediately welcomed with. Once we got this bad boy opened right here up front, we have got Aqua Tabs. Each one of these will purify a liter of water. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten. So we've got a total of 20 liters of water there. As I mentioned, this is, uh, you know, going along with the idea that you're carrying a water container. I mean, if you're out on a day hike of any kind, you're going to have, a, you know, a bottle of water, something. It's easy to find trash. That's why there is not like a one liter water bag in this kit. It would be super easy to throw it on the outside or even squeeze it in on the interior of this, just make it a little bit more difficult to close. Uh, but, you know, I just wanted to preface that. So we got our aqua tabs going in right here we have got a ravi von keychain light this is the aurora a2 this thing on low uh, actually has a insanely long burn time uh, based off my experience i've been carrying this thing as an edc keychain light for over a year um, and it also has a turbo mode now it only has like a 15 minute burn time fully charged on the turbo mode so wouldn't recommend it, but if you needed that for signaling, uh, just anybody within a mile's you know, radius of you uh, that's within eyesight would be able to see that light. Right here, I have a densely rolled bit of duct tape that covers like minor gear repairs, first aid needs. Uh, you put this on the edges and the corners of your emergency space blanket to, you know, strengthen it, reinforce it to help prevent the risk of tearing. Uh, just a million and one uses for duct tape. And since I rolled this in and on itself, there is just a ridiculous amount of tape in this small form factor. Okay, now right here, this is a BCB ferro rod with a built-in compass. Now, normally these bubble compasses are... Uh, just hot garbage, but I have compared this side by side with my, you know, 90 some dollar Sun 2 compass and it is, you know, definitely not as good, not as accurate, but accurate enough to where uh, it's better than licking your finger, sticking it in the wind and trying to figure out which direction you're going. Um, so that combined with the ferro rod on our knife, that's, you know, hundreds if not thousands of fires that we have with us. Just because it didn't take up much to no space, I threw in one Band-Aid. I would personally opt for duct tape um, for most, you know, needs. But if you just got a minor cut on your finger that you wanted to uh, try to help prevent infections, you got that. Okay, now right here, this is a hank of survivor cord uh, this is also made by titan survival and the thing that's really cool about that is unlike regular paracord that has you know like the standard uh multi-strand interior this has just as many strands as 550 cord but it also has extra strands in that it has a strand of waterproof tinder it has a strand of fishing line and then it also has a strand of snare wire and all of that runs the full length alongside those, uh, I can't remember if it's five or seven strands that make up the 550 cord, uh, the 550 survivor cord that they send out, but just tons of versatility. That's why, you know, this does seem kind of like a bulky hank to have in a 10 survival kit like that. Uh, but with everything that is integrated into this cordage, it, you know, makes up for its size. Now, I did just have these loosely in there to take up, you know, just a small gaps and spaces but i have four benadryls and then i have two 600 milligram ibuprofen so those could be broken half uh for you know four 300 ibuprofens um but you know if you're in a situation where you're relying on a kit like this any type of minor inconvenience whether it be allergies or you know inflammation in your joints knees back pain uh leg pain having stuff like that can make it a lot more bearable I'm going to leave those in there. 
I've got three large safety pins. You can take, you know, use that for uh, clothing repair. Uh, use it to attach stuff to your gear, to your clothing. Uh, attach it to other small things so that you don't lose them. Keep them together. You can also take and turn these into fishing hooks or use them for uh, sewing needles. Here I've got three large fire plugs. Uh, you can take and break these up, uh, break these in half. Um, and so that would be six guaranteed fires. If you're in really, really wet conditions, you know, use a whole one and you're still guaranteed to get a fire going. So we have that as a tender option. Plus we have the inner strand of our cordage there um, that is fireproof tender. Okay, the last thing in this bottom compartment just chilling on its own. This is a little synthetic lure um, because up here top I've got a sewing kit and a fishing kit taped to the top that we'll look at. Um, this is one that I've had luck with uh, in the past. That's why I went with this one. If you're like a very avid fisherman, I'm sure you probably know something that would work a lot better. Um, ideally, you'll be looking uh, for night crawlers and insects if you are fishing for living like the mountainous areas and most of the areas i go fishing is not really even going to be an option using the snare wire that is integrated into this hank of cordage would be the way to go okay now up here on the lid of the tin i've got two sections gorilla taped down uh, the gorilla tape you know could also be a good fire tender this miniature strip is my sewing kit so i've got four needles a really uh quite a bit of thread here i went with a bright red thread that way that it would be easy you know to see what it is that you're uh, sewing working on um, and also it makes it easier to uh, monitor the area of your clothing or gear um, that you repaired so you can keep an eye on it and make sure that it's not you know like unraveling or if you need to uh, make any type of adjustments or additional repairs before it uh, you know gets too far gone now looking at our fishing kit part uh, i included quite a bit of 25 pound test fishing line in this so it might kind of unravel whenever i peel this back best i can oh okay that actually held surprisingly well okay so i have a lot of 25 pound test fishing line there and then i've got four hooks with integrated sinkers the four hooks are all four different sizes uh, in a pinch you can even use fishing hooks as a uh, as a you know a sewing method as well as using the fishing line as a form of thread. Oh, and then part of the sewing kit too, I, I had to take and pick this out to get those uh, peels to show you. Uh, but this is what I would opt for in the beginning and for the sake of time, this is what uh, was resting down here in the main compartment. This is a large no-sew patch, which you can uh, take and cut to any exact size you want, or if you did have just a large tear in your pants or something, you could peel this whole thing off, stick it, and you know, you've know you got yourself uh, a quick and easy repair method. Plus, this is good for other gear as well. Uh, I know it seems like I'm, I'm talking a bit you know heavy on the gear repair, but during wintertime, uh, making sure that your clothing, uh, any type of sleeping gear, you know, your outer shells, your insulating layers are taken care of is very, very important to, uh, you know, decrease the uh, chances of you running into an issue with exposure to uh, the weather. And then, as I mentioned about, you know, fishing not really being always a great food procurement uh, option, being in the mountains and a lot of places that I go, if you're in a, like an actual survival situation, uh, keep it in mind that you can go a solid week or two without food before you run into any major, uh, like, you know, major problems. Uh, you could take, and there are snares you can rig up using fishing line and fishing hooks. They're just, they're very illegal and a bit unethical, but in a legitimate survival situation, neither of those things really matter. So, you know, you do what you got to do. Well, guys, there you have it. That is everything laid out. So quite a bit of useful gear um, and will be more than enough to uh, kind of help get you through and sustain yourself for, uh, you know, any type of short-term survival situation you might find yourself in. Still, you know, highly recommend pairing this uh, or using this kit in conjunction with something like this, like this Volcan Titanium 
canteen set or at the very least just make sure you carry a large smart water bottle with you and this kit will serve you plenty well so that's going to do it for this one guys as always really appreciate taking time to watch the video if you enjoyed it make sure you hit the thumbs up button subscribe if you haven't already share the channel with your friends family anybody that enjoys good old outdoor activities outdoor gear and uh, anything that falls underneath the outdoor umbrella uh, if you're interested in any of the little doodads here in this video i will try to link to everything that is still available on the internet down in the video description below so go give that a peek um and that is going to do it for this one guys so until the next one adios